I took a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night So I started running so I wouldn't be too late Welcome everyone to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about what we are going to be doing as coaches because many people don't even understand what a mindset coach is. And I say, what is a mindset coach? Well, they help you with your mind, right? That's a simple answer that someone can give. But a mindset coach is so much more. We look at everything that encompasses you. We ask you questions, but we don't look for the answer we look for the answer that you don't give us. We look for all the little tips and tricks that you're trying to avoid, all the hints that you're trying to hide something, all the obstacles that you're unwilling to overcome. We're paying attention to your whole entire life. And it's not so much that we're there to judge you, it's that we're there to make you aware of what's happening in your life. So I wanted to bring on someone who was well-versed in the whole self of mindset and was well versed in the whole sense of life coaching. So here today, we're going to have Nancy Picard come on and help us understand a little bit more about our mind and to understand a little bit more about why we do things and why we don't do things. Because it's important for us to understand both of them. Because if we can understand why we want something, then we can say, okay, this is what we have to do. Versus why we don't want something, are we trying to avoid something? There's so much more to the mind than just saying, hey, I want this in my life. I'm going to go for it. Because if we're our own worst enemy, which we typically are, we need to learn how to become our best friend. So how do we do that? So let's figure that out with Nancy and myself. <laughs> Welcome, Nancy Picard, to Coaching the Session. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So read your bio, read your page. You do so many different types of coaching. You do holistic life coaching, mindset coaching. What coaching don't you do, right? But I want you, in your own words, to tell the world what you do. I'm a shadow coach. So all of the different modalities that I do actually all come back to there's a discrepancy between where my clients are and where they want to be. And I think it all comes from beliefs that are in their subconscious that came from their childhood that they're not aware of that keep them plain small. So mm -hmm. I refer to them as shadow beliefs. It's a Jungian term. Um, it's not new to the world, but it's disempowering beliefs. It's unconscious beliefs you're not aware of. So something happens as a child and you're just not emotionally mature enough to understand what happened. And without even recognizing that you're making that belief, you're making a belief about you in the world. It gets buried in your subconscious. It never even hits your conscious mind, but it actually rules your operating system. So mm. they can sound like, um, I need to stay quiet so I will be safe. I'm unlovable. I'm broken. I'm unworthy. I'm stupid. My voice doesn't matter. My needs don't matter. I'm on, um, I'll never be chosen. There's just, there's so many, um, every client I has, has some variation that funnels down to, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And when I help them uncover their beliefs, then they get to say, Oh my God, that makes so much sense. I see why this is what I've been doing. And those beliefs also have an underlying commitment that goes with them. The commitment is the promise. It's the strategy that we use to keep our belief alive. So I had the belief I wasn't safe alone. I was five years old. I was playing with a, a big lighter and I put myself on fire and I was in the hospital for a week. And so for a five-year-old who puts herself on fire, the belief that I'm not safe alone makes perfect sense. I wasn't safe alone. Look what happens when I'm alone, right? Mm -hmm. So moving forward, then my strategy to keep that belief alive was a promise to myself to not be alone, to be the best friend, to be the best partner, to make sure that people wanted 
to be with me. I was going to be that person that guys were going to want to be with, right? And so I was a serial long-term relationship person. So that belief kept me safe for a really long time. Fast forward, I'm married 26 years. My marriage falls apart. I fall apart. I'm a mess. I'm like on the ground for the count. And it wasn't until I uncovered that belief with doing shadow work that I realized, well, that's not true anymore. Like my adult conscious mind knows I'm safe alone. And so I was able to unravel that and give myself a new empowering belief that supports my new situation. And instead of freaking out and thinking I have to finish that, fix that picture, I, I was able to like be happy alone and travel alone and start to do things that up until I uncovered that I would not have been able to do. Mm. And going back to where you started, I used to be a teacher, former educator, and I see it in the schools where we see these young minds, these students, kindergartners, first graders, and you just see them broken, where it's from a family member or from a classmate and sometimes a teacher. So we, so we have those experiences in all the realms of our environment when we're younger, and then we take it on and maybe we hide it away. So then that's just going to be that dirty laundry we just toss in a corner. And we say, well, I'm going to forget about it. Well, the thing about the things we toss in the corner is that eventually they begin to smell, they begin to rot. And we have to, at some point in our life, take the time, take the energy to go in that corner and move everything out because it doesn't serve a purpose in our life in that corner. We can put something more powerful in that corner, a better self, a better, a better idea, a better mindset in that corner, rather than having all that negativity, all that shadow self in that corner. So we have to start to realize, okay, I need to start to do something that's going to help me get to a better tomorrow. I'm sure you have much experience with this. Do you get clients that are coming to you with no problems or do they have a problem, right? Typically people wait until there's a trauma. They wait until their corner is filled to the brink where they can't throw anything else. And when they try, everything topples over. Now they're dealing with all the stuff that they have been tossing in a corner. Why do you think people toss things in a corner rather than dealing with it right away? Oh, so many reasons. But one of them is that we run on autopilot. We're really not aware of how unhappy we are or how our boundaries have been crossed or how long we've been in a situation that we're not happy with because we just run on autopilot. And it's actually not until something shakes us out of that autopilot that we're like, wow, I haven't been happy in this relationship for five years, or I haven't liked that job for so long. I mean, people who come to me, they're unhappy. They may or may not know why. I mean, a lot of times people come to me and they think it's their partner, but that's, you know, it's never their partner. I mean, it could be, but basically it's inner work. It's you're, you're unhappy for yourself. And when you figure that out, you actually are happier with your partner than you thought you, you were. That's, mm -hmm. They're not the problem generally. Sometimes they are, and then you need to get out. So people don't do the work because they're afraid or they're afraid if they make a change, people won't love them, people will leave them. Those are other that, you know, those beliefs are, they're strong beliefs. And other people whose lives are seemingly going along well, those people think they don't need any help. Those mm. people actually think that life is working out for them because they're doing everything right. This is how I roll. It's not really true. This shit just doesn't hit the fan for you yet. And it's not until it does that you actually do the work. Most people, if we're, if life is working, I mean- I wouldn't get a life coach if my life was like rocking and rolling and I was totally in alignment and everything I said I wanted to do, I took care of. I wouldn't need a life coach. So for me, a life coach is for healthy, oh. mentally healthy people who need support. They need an accountability partner. They need somebody to help them uncover what they can't see. 
They need somebody who's not going to collude with them and is going to actually help them open up and see what they're not seeing and make the changes and then chunk those changes down so they're bite-sized, they're doable, the people can become successful. My job is done if I've taught my clients how to trust themselves, trust love, self-care, self-love, self-confidence. That's what I'm after. And that comes when you really have been gotten the tools to stay in alignment, figure out what it is you want, stay out of autopilot and go after what you want. Get out of your safety zone, get out of your comfort zone and move forward. It's so easy for people to say, it's their fault. It's not my fault. So they pass off the blame to someone else and they hope that fixes it because now it's no longer my problem. I don't have to deal with it. So in relationships, especially, they're the reason why I am not happy. Right. And they will say that in every sequential relationship, every new relationship they get, that's a habitual problem, right? So we have that habit and we develop these subconscious habits. And then we wonder why our life is not necessarily going in the way we want, because we can careen off a cliff, but it doesn't have to be immediately. We can be heading toward that cliff and we might have the indication saying, hey, there's a cliff over there. Let's not keep going that way. But we decide saying, you know what? That's for a later me. I'm not going to worry about that. And I, I noticed that a lot with the body. I think that's the easiest way I can give that example. We don't take care of ourselves. And it's not just the relationships we keep, but how we treat our body, what we put into our body, and then also what we put into our mind. Just think about how negative the world is. You turn on the news, negativity immediately hits you right off the bat. There's something going on. There's something negative, something for us to worry about. And then we worry about it. And, and then we say, whoa, that, that's, that's heavy, right? And we might let it affect us or we might let it affect us on the subconscious level. But what we have to notice is what we should kind of siphon what we put in our life. So if we are eating poorly, how can we eat better? If we're having toxic friends, how can we get more positive friends in our life? If we are putting in bad material into our mind, this drama, negativity, listening to drama shows, rather than listening to personal development, podcasts, reading books, things like that, that are going to help us. Why is it that people would rather get the negative than seek the positive things in life? I think that part of that is that they're back in autopilot. I also think like I'm really a health nut. I used to own a personal training gym. And so I only eat organic. I eat really well. I take good supplements, all, all that stuff. However, I'm an over-exerciser. So I have the opposite problem of most people. I have to set a boundary around how much I can exercise in a day, not the other way around. And so that's a boundary I've had to set. And when life kind of catches up with me or I'm on autopilot or like when I was training for Kilimanjaro, I just got back from two weeks as a presenter in Mexico when I, and there was exercise all day long. When I get into certain situations, I let go of my boundary that I'm only going to do two things in a day. And I could, you know, take five classes in a day and, you know, I could just, it's, it's incredible. So basically you have to, you have to know, number one, what is healthy and what's not. And then you have to be mindful of it so that you know what works for you or what doesn't work for you. Most people have to make themselves exercise a certain amount of days a week or meditate, you know, work in a certain amount of time. And if you don't catch yourself or you don't think you, you know, I mean, so many people eat things and they'll think, I, I don't eat badly, but I'm thinking, well, I just watched them eat this and I've, and then they is this. And, and like you, you put that all together. And the truth is you really do eat crappy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that we're just not, we're either not, people are not educated as much as they should be, or they're, they go after instant gratification instead of long-term gratification. Instant gratification is always feeding a wound. It's not, long-term gratification is like your conscious adult mind knows what it wants and it's willing to do the work and put in the time to get it. Instant gratification is feeding a wound. You know, 
I need to, I feel bad. I feel sad. I feel depressed. Let me overexercise. Let me eat. Let me binge watch TV for five hours. Let me numb out any way I can. So when you don't have a coach, it happens way more, way, way more often. When you do have a coach, you are, at least my clients, somewhere in the week, they're like, oh no, I got to get this together. I cannot show up. Like, cause I, I take no prisoners. Like I can't work with somebody who isn't going to follow through on their action steps on a weekly basis. Like don't show up with any excuse because I helped you come up with those action steps from your heart. And if you don't do them, you let your ego get in the way, your, your disempowering beliefs stop you. And therefore, if that's the way you're going to roll, don't hire a coach. I can only work as hard as my clients work. So they have to stay in alignment and I'm there to help them and hold them accountable. But if you show up week after week, then you might as well go see a therapist because then you can talk. And if that's what you want, that's okay. But that's not what I deliver. Definitely. And there's a huge difference between a therapist and a life coach. And I I have a whole blog on that. And there's books, there's so many articles on that thing. And many people who come to me looking for therapy help, it's more so, well, what are you thinking that is the problem with yourself? Because therapists diagnose, right? What is your problem? And then I have some people who have gone to therapists and then they'll say the therapist diagnosed me with this. And then we go in and we look and they're really not diagnosed with anything. It's just that they're thinking that way. And then that's what they got diagnosed with. So they're thinking now I'm broken. Mm -hmm. Doctor says I'm broken. I need these medicines to keep me calm, to keep me thinking the way I should be thinking rather than changing our mindset, taking that time to change the pathways in our brain, because the whole process of change and mindset It's not easy. I'm I'm not going to sit here and say it's easy to change your mindset because it's not. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it took me years in order for me to change my mindset and then to get a hold of it to the point where, all right, I'm good regardless of what goes on. But then again, if I don't do the constant maintenance on my mind, then I'm going to start to wane. Similar to how if I don't go to the gym five days out of the week, I'm going to start to see my body slowly lose muscle. Right. And and as you were saying, right you have to give yourself boundaries. And that's so important too. I have rules in my life, in my house. It helps me stay true to where I want to be versus, okay, I can't go to the gym. This is bad for me. Sometimes when people get on the tangent of trying to find something they love, they might do too much, right? And it could be an addiction per se, where sometimes addictions could be a good thing, but sometimes they can lead to bad things. And, you know, work overworking out is seems like a good thing, right? Like I'm overworking out, it seems like I'm I'm gonna be the fittest person in the world. That sounds like a great thing. But at the same time, long term, right? Like, what is that going to do to our body? And then Mm -hmm. the long term effects, just how we think too. are we positive, right? Are we thinking in a positive manner? Are we loving ourselves? Are we appreciating what we have the gratitude aspect of life? There's so many different components that we have to worry about. And when you have a coach on your side, helping you along the way, they're able to take some of that off your plate. I like to think of it as having someone on your side of the table, not sitting on the other side, literally Mm -hmm. right next to you. Right. And they got your back, regardless of what goes on. We got your back and we understand you're going to have a bad day. You might have a bad week. We understand. Right. But at the same time, we expect you to show up. And if you don't show up, let's figure out why. And if it becomes a habit, let's figure out why. Because we just get into negative habits, bad habits, Mm -hmm. similar to how people make promises that they they don't keep. And I always give this example, New Year's resolutions, they make a promise and they don't keep it. A coach is not a New Year's resolution. All right. They're there to make sure you get to your goal. It's not like I would like for this year, for me to get to this goal, I want to get to this goal, right? So we're adding more certainty to your plans and your goals, right? Right. Because if you can get there, imagine how much your life can change. What would happen if you gave a hundred percent all the way from today to the rest of the year, where would your life be? Would it be better? Most likely, right? If we learned how to find 
our fullest potential, all right, or we found someone to unlock our fullest potential, what would that do for us? Mm -hmm. And for many, that's going to bring an abundance of wealth in our life. But then people are still going to think that success is limited in their lives. They're going to say, well, I'm, you know, I'm just not smart enough. And, you know, you know, I don't have any good ideas or, or I'm not confident enough, right? We have all that self-talk that came from when we were younger, talking about our shadow self. Mm -hmm. Now we're adults and we have to heal from that trauma. Why do you think many adults choose to ignore their trauma that they had? And they just say, you know what, I'm going to pretend it never happened. But if they didn't pretend it never happened, then they can heal from it and get to better. So the question is going to be basically, why are adults so filled with trauma when they have the capability in their brain to heal? People don't want to look at their stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's too painful to look at it. Mm -hmm. They have a disempowering belief that they can't get to the other side. This is not for me. This is for other people. I think they think that people who are successful are fearless and they're not fearless. They don't understand that nobody is fearless. Those of us who are successful have learned how to take fear by the hand and move with faith and not try to get rid of their fear, but bring it with them. I use fear as a force for change. Mm -hmm. If there's something I'm afraid to do, I know that I'm going to be that on the other side. You know, I was just, I was recently asked to build a course for a company and I thought, oh my God, you know, I think they think I'm better than I am. I don't know that I can do that. You know, the whole imposter syndrome. Of course I said, yes, but this is all the stuff that's going on in my head. And I realized that the moment I step in and I do the very thing I'm afraid to do, I will be the very thing that I think I'm not. All I have to do is step in and build it. And then I am it. And so that's how I live my life. And that's how I try to help my clients. Like I tell my clients similar to the kinds of stuff that you were saying, but that no one gets to the Olympics without a coach. It, you just can't do it on your own. And so why would you think life is any different? We can't see what we can't see. We don't know the other sides of us. We don't know that our beliefs, you know, people who are negative are going to get more negativity. You get where you put your attention. So I mean, I have clients that start out with me and everything that comes out of their mouth is victim mentality. This happened to them. This happened to them. This happened to them. I actually have a, a new friend who was telling me a story about how all of these different people disrespect her. And then she tells me, and my coach agrees with me. And I'm thinking, your coach should not be colluding with you. Your coach should be helping you say, all right, what are you doing to attract people into your life that are disrespecting you? Because if something is happening over and over again, if you're attracting the same people over and over again, the only thing that's in all of those situations is you. So let's uncover the belief that's attracting those people so you no longer need to bring them into your life. And I think that people just, to answer your question, those that don't want to look at their trauma, they've had enough trauma. They don't really want to relive it because they don't realize that reliving it, they can actually make peace with it. They can surrender to what happened, not try to fight it, not be in resistance to what has happened. And from that place of surrender, creatively decide, okay, I, this happened. These are my beliefs. This is my trauma, but I don't have to carry it with me for the rest of my life. That's a choice. People who have had really bad childhoods or really bad things happen to them, it's still a choice whether you let that keep you down or you use it and move forward. It's all a choice. And you are 100% responsible for those choices. Either stay a victim or put on your big girl panties and or big boy panties, whatever you're wearing, and let's do the work. Mm -hmm. I love, 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 love what you said there. So powerful. Anyone listening on audio on the podcast channels, rewind that. Listen to that 10 times. And mm -hmm. then you're going to start to see your life change. That's the key right there. Because I could have been a victim, right? Nancy could have been a victim. 
anyone can say, my life was so hard. I had this trauma in my life. I'm a victim. I'm not going to push. I'm not going to be more than what I am. This is not allotted for me. Anyone can say that. Anyone. We all have childhood trauma. I mean, just looking at my experience, I had a good life. I had parents who loved me. They worked really hard. They sent me to private schools. But at the same time, there was negativities in my life too, right? I grew up in the ghetto, uh, you know, look on the corner, gang violence, uh, you know, uh, drugs, things like that. That's happening in my neighborhood. And it seemed like always every three months, because my mom's always working, we'll stay for our grandmother and someone will always break in our home. And I remember one day, you know, we came home and the house was ransacked. And so we, you know, looked through the chaos and trying to figure out, okay, well, what's left, right? Of course, TVs were gone, VCR was gone, all the game systems were gone, jewelry was gone. And then I remember going to my room and, I, and this is me, I'm a kid, right? And I have a Power Ranger band-aids underneath my bed and I, <laughs> and, and I hid the Power Ranger band-aids underneath my bed. And so I go upstairs and I don't know why I did this. I go upstairs and I look for the band-aids and the band-aids were gone. Oh no. Out of all the things in the home that could have been taken, why were the band-aids taken, right? And I just like to think about that sometimes. It's not that it's funny or anything, but it's so interesting that I'm thinking about a band-aid, right? right? Like that's a trauma for me. I thought about something that I hid it away. I hid these band-aids. Mm -hmm. right? Maybe because I had a brother and a sister. So I'm trying to hide things from them. So I was like, I'm going to put these band-aids away and they weren't there. And so I started to think, well, what could be some possibilities for me thinking about why those band-aids were there? And it was because I was trying to protect something. I was trying to heal. The band-aids were my healing source, my cover up for the wounds, right? right? Of the negativity. Right. And they weren't there anymore. So now I had to face reality without a Band-Aid anymore. And I had to start to think, well, what, what do I want my life to be? And that was where I started to really think, how do I want my future to look? And it wasn't about the grades. It wasn't about, it wasn't about living in a different area. It's what is going to happen if someone breaks in my home again, right? So I started to think along those lines. And then I wanted to get stronger, right? So then I'm just thinking in my head, well, I have to be able to protect my family, right? So then just going to the gym, working out, but I'm still a, a kid, but that was always a constant in my okay. mind. And then as soon as I turned 15 and I'm able to lift and gain muscle, I immediately did that with no obstacle. It was just like automatic in my mind where I had that type of thought in my mind, that trauma per se of, of, of that memory. But I use that. I use that saying, okay, I don't want that for my life in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. No one's going to come in and take my band-aids or whatever they're going to take, right? That's just my mindset. But I could have said, what's the point? I have things and people take it from me, right? And then I'm afraid to allow anyone in my life. And I don't. I just lock myself away and I say, okay, I'm not going to have anything either. I'm not afraid of loss. If I lose something, I know I can get it back. And I know so many people hold on to money like this with a fist and they say, I don't want to give money away because I can't get it back. And that's investing into a coach, right? I understand sometimes money can be tight. I understand that sometimes that you, if you look at your childhood, you say, well, I can get over this. Yes, you can, but it takes a lot longer if you don't have a coach. Right. right? You can't, you can only see what you you don't know what you don't know. And you can't uh -huh. see what you don't see. I love your story about the band-aid. Like I'm sitting here thinking about it, you know, so what, so on the one hand, you could have the belief that anything you care about will be taken away. Love and life means, you know, my things are going to go, go missing or, you know, things are going to be, everything's going to be taken away from me. Why bother? That would be a victim mindset, uh -huh. but also the, the analogy that you no longer have the protection of the band-aids and you're going to have to protect yourself. You know, I no longer need those band-aids. Life is never going to protect me. I need to protect myself. That's actually a more powerful way to think about it than why bother because things are just going to get taken away from me. Mm -hmm. So I love that whole band-aid. And, and yeah, and it's so interesting because I just finished my book 
And it's not out yet. It's still there, but I'm going to just share a snippet of a story that I had. And it's about a builder who wanted to build a home, his perfect home. So he goes out, he builds his first home. He loves it. Everything is right. And well, he's living there a few months and he realizes that he doesn't really like how the air smells. So then he's like, you know, I, you know, I don't, I love my home. It's a beautiful home, but he moves. So he moves somewhere else and it's, you know, very beautiful air. And, and, and then something else happens right in his life or in around the home. And then the story keeps going on where he keeps selling his home. One time he loses his home to a fire because he was too close to a volcano, but he kept rebuilding. And the story ends where his house is destroyed yet again. And it happened quite some time in the story, but he had the option to give up and not build his perfect home or pick up his tools again and try to build again. And, and that's just a, a very quick snippet of that story, right? It goes in depth, it's detailed, but you know, I'm not gonna read the whole book for everyone on the podcast. You have a book too, right? Is it about mindset helping people? Yeah, it's called Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage and Transform Your Life. And it's mm. literally a step-by-step how-to, mm. you know, how to get out of autopilot, how to figure out what your soul wants for you. Like, what is your vision for the future? So you pick your thing. When um, when I was turning 60, I thought, oh my God, what a disgusting number. And I have to prove to myself what I can, that I've still got it going on. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to go train and climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And by the time I actually did it, I was 61. And it was an amazing experience. And I thought that I was going to name my book, What's Your Kilimanjaro? Mm-hmm. You know? You don't have to go climb a mountain in Africa at 19,000 feet to do something outside your comfort zone. But what is your Kilimanjaro? And then I realized that nobody's going to read that book unless they wanted to climb Kilimanjaro. They won't get. So I, you know, life coaching is an investment and not everybody can afford it. And I wanted to have a tool out there that people could use so that they could do the work, even if they can't afford me, they Mm -hmm. can you know, I have the book, I have exercises, I have a workbook, I have a course online that's very inexpensive that has audios that goes with it. And it's like all these different levels so that you, maybe you can, maybe you can't hire me, but you could still do the work. And I mean, I think my book is like 1899. So for 1899, this is a great way to start. And, um, I've been really successful with it. I really I love my book. I'm sure you're going to love your book too. But yeah, it's just a vehicle to help people. So mm-hmm. when I was in a low point in my life, it was just because a trauma happened in my life. And it was the first time it, that has that type of trauma has ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. So I had to navigate myself through it. And how I did it was through books, actually. So yeah. it was like a book like yours, where it was like a how to like, this is step one, all the way to step 10. And I followed it and it was so powerful for me because it said, okay, this is how I'm feeling. And I was like, yeah, this is how I'm feeling. And this is what you need to do. And I was like, "Ah, I got to do that, huh? And it was a challenge for me where every day I just wanted to not, not get up. I just didn't, I I just didn't want to get up. And just from destroying my body and, and realizing that I can't keep on with this, right. It's, it's, it's literally killing me. I said, I have to make the change and the change wasn't easy, right? Change is just not easy, but a book helped me. I was in the library in the basement, reading books for eight, nine hours a day, trying to find the answer. And if Nancy has the answer in, in, in her book, why not get it right? Why not say, okay, I'm going to read this book, this resource, and then start to change my life, right? Because if you're not completely satisfied with your life right now, today, then we have to start to figure out what can we do, right? Whether it be a book, whether it be getting a coach, watching certain types of videos, like motivational videos, personal development videos, whatever you need, right? It's going to be a building block. For me, it was reading several books until one finally resonated with me. And right now you might be listening to the podcast. You might be watching the motivational videos that I have, but then you get Nancy's book, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, makes sense, right? Right. It's the building blocks because I know I can't do this by myself. That's why I created the podcast. That's why 
I have the business that I have. I know I can't help everyone in the world. I know I can't help the amount of people I want to help. So that's why I bring other wonderful coaches on who have something to say, who are, are experts in their field. And they can say, hey, this is what I do. This is how I help people. These are the resources that I have that they can utilize for their betterment. Because my goal is to help people get to better. And I understand society right now is a mess where you might not know left from right or what tomorrow is going to bring. But if we can start to amplify our life by giving ourselves something positive to read, something positive to listen to, you're going to notice that your brain automatically goes in that direction, right? If you're looking forward, the probability of you walking forward is very high. And if you're looking at a positive book, personal development book, if you have a coach, the probability of you going in the right direction is also very high. So finding that person that you resonate with is going to be very important. So Nancy, I wanted to get a few last words from you. And then of course, please share with the audience how they can find you. Yeah. Okay. Well, where you can find me is nancypicardlifecoach.com. On my website, I have a link for free discovery calls. I have a link for a free chapter of my book. I have a ton of webinars and all my other podcasts and all the different modalities. So everything is really there. All my courses, I offer 20% off for anybody who's been on a podcast hmm. and you'll have all that in your show notes, right? You do Please. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to leave you, the audience with is that the last person in a race still beats the person on the couch. Hmm. So get off the couch take tiny steps out of your comfort zone and that the juice is in the journey so that even if you fall, you're falling forward. It's a stepping stone to success. Successful people are just people that don't quit. That's it. No difference. They just don't give up. They keep building that house over and over and over again. Exactly. And the idea of making sure we get to your goal is going to be paramount, right? The idea that you get to your goal is paramount. So find someone who's going to help you get to your goal. And you might not have people in your life right now that help you. And you might have a spouse that's not being proactive in helping you get to your goal. Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be people who are right. Nancy is going to be able to be an asset in your corner. Myself, I'm going to be able to be an asset in your corner. And then just making sure that your goal is something that you want to reach, right? Saying to yourself, I want to get to this place in my life. Now, do you want to take a month? Do you want to take a year, right? Depending on your, your time, right? And I always encourage people, when you get a coach, you get there quicker, right? So don't delay. Make sure you get someone that's going to help propel you to your future self, your most desired place you want to be a lot quicker and stop waiting around. All right. Thank you so much, Nancy, for coming on. And if you need anything in the future, I'm here for you. Thank you. All right, bye. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. And also a huge thank you to my guest, Nancy Picard. She is filled with wisdom. So much great stories. And she has helped so many people get to a better mindset. And talking with her on air and off air, she's going to be a valuable person to have help you to get to a better mindset, a better life. Because I understand that I can't fight this fight to get everyone on the same page of getting a strong and positive mindset. I can't do it by myself. I have to have a team. And the team doesn't have to be on my payroll. Nancy has a practice that she does with her coaching clients. And they're all in good hands. When you have someone who's well-versed like Nancy, rest assured that you're going to be in good hands. Because I think part of us not wanting to go out and get a coach is that we don't know if we can trust someone, especially if we have been hurt all of our life, especially if we have been misaligned and we don't know where to go. Sometimes a little bit of direction can be the key to get us to where we want to be. So if you're looking for a direction, head over to Nancy's website. Her book is going to be a powerful resource for anyone trying to get to a better life. And then of course, if you wanted to check out some of my stuff, RevenantConcepts.com is another place you can go for blogs, videos. There's so much that you can get from coaching a session, more than just a beautiful voice 
and some words of wisdom. I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching a Session. Until then, everyone, take care.